in a circuit where you have a bormel that is close to a cyclone, the operating variables of the bormel and the cyclone work very well together. So if you click on the bormel, you will see that in the operating variables you have three choices the ball load, the speed and the ball size. However, the speed in a overflow secondary bormel is usually fixed so in most cases you will not be able to change the speed of the bormel. Then you also need to know how much water is added and um, information about the OR properties. For a bormel you specifically need to know the bond work index but you need to know at which closing screen size the bond work index test was done at. For a cyclone you need to um, know the vortex finder and the spigot size um, as well as the number operating. These three things are the uh, variables that can be changed on the cyclone. However, in terms of the fittings of the cyclone, um, this spigot size is changed most often or most easily. It's not that easy to change the vortex finder. In the left hand bottom corner you will see the um, water addition to the cyclone. So if we want to simulate different water additions to the cyclone, this is the number that will be changed. Then you have the calibration constants. There are two model options here. Um, the default model is the model that considers dimensions and if you only want to use the normal efficiency curve, um, you will click on the efficiency curve um, button. If you were doing a design study and you did not have these calibration constant numbers, you would click on this button to fill it with the default numbers. So if we simulate this circuit, um, you will see that here where I have an error warning in the cyclone. So when I click on the cyclone, I will see here that I have my underflow and my overflow results. Um, important numbers to look at is the percentage solids. So it's reasonable and within the normal range, as well as the final product size, um, P80 over there. The pressure is reported as well as the recirculating load. Here I can see that the recirculating load is red, so I know that there is a problem with the recirculating load. In the advice column, it says that the recirculating load is too high. Um, it makes a recommendation that we reduce the apex size or increase the vortex finder size. Now, if, when we want to optimize a Bormel cyclone circuit operation, it is important to know um, what spigot sizes you have available and what ball sizes you have available for simulation. Because often you can do a simulation with variables that work in terms of the simulation, but then it is not available in real life. So here we're saying that there are three spigots available for simulation, 210, 230, and 250 millimeters. And then there are two ball sizes on the um, stockpile for the Bormol. So previously the advice said that we should 
um, the recirculating load was too high and we should try a lower spigot size. So I'm using 0.21, 210 millimeter for this simulation. So after doing the simulation, I can see that this option worked. So here my percent solids in the underflow and the overflow are correct in a good range. The pressure is in an acceptable range and the recirculating load is within an acceptable range. Um, however, in the advice column there, we still have some advice and this advice is just general rules on how a change in a variable will affect the performance of the cyclone. So in the demo exercise, you can try various different options and see the effect of a variable change on the performance of the Bulmol cyclone circuit.